Hello and welcome to the Scientific Adventure of the Beard Man. Today we're going to be looking at a concept builder on physicsclassroom.com under the title, the topic uh, Waves and Sound with the title Wave Basics. So the apprentice level for this is called Two Truths and a Lie and you need to pick the lie, the thing that's not true. The things you need to know, waves are produced by vibrating objects. Okay, so first let's take a look at this here. We see we got this vibrating object here in the center. It's some sort of a sphere that's been compressed and it's kind of vibrating back and forth. And you'll see as it vibrates one direction, okay, it pushes the molecules that direction. And as it uh, retracts back, it kind of leaves a vacuum that those molecules move into. And if you look carefully, you can see that a given molecule is just moving back and forth. The molecules don't move out here to the outside. They just kind of go back and forth here. And the energy is what travels out here. And that's important. Mechanical inner waves carry energy through vibrating particles from one place to another. So they carry the energy out here to the outside. Okay. Each molecule goes back and forth, okay? But the energy, energy is what moves all the way from one side to the other, all right? Um, so uh, uh, here we have a uh, longitudinal wave. Once again, you can see the particles moving back and forth. You can see the vibrating, uh, vibrating, uh, what do you call it? Object, vibrating object, sure. Um, and that's pushing, you see, we got a couple red, uh, couple red objects here um, that um, can show you the particles are just moving back and forth. Notice those red particles and all the black ones too, they're just harder to see. Don't actually move from left to right. Once again, it's just the energy carrying them there. All right, let's clear that screen. There we go. All right. So uh, next level is called matching pairs. Basically, it has you make sure you understand the definitions and words. I chose not to use the exact definition of the word because I want you to process. And when you process, you remember better. So that's good. So a mechanical wave is one of the words you need to know. And that's basically a wave that moves through matter like uh, sound traveling through the air, traveling through water. Sound doesn't travel through a vacuum. It needs matter, okay? Um, if you flick the end of your hose when because it's stuck on something, that wave that travels down the hose is traveling through matter. It's another example of a mechanical wave. A jump rope is an example of a mechanical wave. It's traveling through the rope that you're jumping over. Um, next one is an electromagnetic wave. That is an alternating pattern of, pattern of ever-changing electric and magnetic fields. Okay, um, And this can move through a vacuum. And that's pretty key. Electromagnetic waves and examples would be light, ultraviolet light, infrared light, radio waves. All those are electric fields and magnetic fields that are constantly changing. All right. Um, the next term is transverse waves. Those are waves that have particles moving perpendicular to the direction of the wave motion. And longitudinal waves are waves that have particles moving parallel to the direction of the wave motion. By the way, if you have any confusion on this particular uh, uh, definitions, I have a whole video about types of waves that could help you out even more. I'll link that up here at the top, or maybe I did at the beginning of this slide. But here are these two types of waves. You can see that the uh, transverse waves have, by the way, these are wave pulses, not full waves. Transverse waves has the particles going up and down, but the energy is going to the side. Longitudinal waves, let's see which way does it go first. I think it goes this direction first, and then it goes back to its equilibrium position and the wave is traveling this way. So let's go back and see our definition here. Okay, we see that um, the uh, transverse wave, the particles move perpendicular. 
we see the particles are going this way, the waves going this way, that's perpendicular, right angles. Longitudinal waves, the particles are moving parallel to the direction of wave motion, the particles going back and forth this way, and the energy is traveling that way. All right, the final level, the wizard level, uh, that did not click. Why did you not click? Trying a new system here. All right, so the wizard level, wave anatomy, you have to know a few definitions. First of all, uh, let's look at longitudinal waves in a little bit more detail. The two parts of them are called compressions and rarefactions. We can see a compression here where they're squeezed together, and we see a rarefaction here where they're spread apart. Okay, if this was in the air, you might say an area of high pressure and an area of low pressure. That's what you would see in a sound wave, for example. Okay, and then uh, transverse waves have crests and troughs. We see the crests up here at the top, the troughs down here at the bottom. Uh, this is essentially assuming it's verti moving vertically. If this was moving side to side, it would be really hard to tell the crest from the trough. But in physics classes in high school, uh, you always see the one at the top called the crest and the one at the bottom called the trough. Now, the key thing about all four of these points is that they are all places where you are farthest from equilibrium. Here you can see equilibrium is if the, if the rope or whatever this is wasn't moving, it would all be sitting right here, the slinky. Um, but where it's farthest from equilibrium, we have special names for that. Here, farthest from equilibrium actually means uh, a greater pressure, a lower pressure, and then we'd have our equilibrium pressures right in those regions. Um, this particular uh, level here does not deal with how far these are from equilibrium. It only talks about these two. So let's take a look at those definitions. First of all, the wavelength is the distance from a point to another point on a wave. Okay, so you can take a compression and go to the next compression, and that distance is the wavelength. Same thing here, you could go from crest to crest. You could go from trough to trough. You could go from a place at equilibrium where it's moving up to the next place at equilibrium where it's moving up. That can be tricky because notice that there's this uh, spot in between where it's at equilibrium, but it's going down. That's not the next place where it repeats itself, okay? And then the, uh, the level here just has you count the number of uh, boxes and multiply that times how big each box is. Most of the boxes are only one, so it makes it easy. Final one is the amplitude. Measuring the amplitude is the distance from the wave. This is where I mentioned we will not be talking about the amplitude in terms of how much the pressure changes, but only over here. So our equilibrium point is here. Our maximum point of displacement is there. That is our amplitude. Notice it's the same as if we went to our maximum place of displacement as a trough down here um, for the types of waves we've got. All right, that's it. I hope you learned a lot about waves. Um, go make some waves and get those uh, things understood in the concept builder here. Uh, click that like and subscribe, ask any questions in the comments, and I'll catch you next time on the scientific adventures of Beer.